When you've logged into your Twitter account, the way you get to your profile is by clicking on profile here on the left hand side <clears throat> and then you can edit it just here on the edit button. So quite straightforward. The first thing that we're going to have a look at is your username. Um, you can see here, I'm using my Twitter um, account as an example, but we're going to look at a few others as well um, later on so that you can see some more well-known speakers as well. Um, but my Twitter name is Esther N. Um, and I'm quite happy with that. I'm Esther Nelson, so that's about as close as I can get to it. Um, but if you um, have join Twitter quite late on in the game, you may find that the name, your name, um, if it's um, a relatively well used one, isn't available and you probably have to have some numbers on the end of it and it just doesn't feel very professional. So take a look at that and make sure that you're happy with the way that your name is because you can actually change it. If you go to more and settings and privacy, you can change it here, so just there. So uh, for example, on mine, it has a suggestion that I use the um, Twitter name speaker's agent, which would be appropriate for me because I am also a speaker's agent as well as a marketing person. Um, so I could use that. So it may have some suggestions if you use Twitter for a little while, uh, depending on um, what you've said you do and your interests and things. The algorithm is very interesting. Um, so have a look at that. So once you've sorted out which username you want to use, um, you can now take a look at your display name. So this is what's displayed on your profile here. So this is my display name. So you can see that I've put my um, username here, um, but also a little bit of information about who I am and what I do. Um, you can fit um, 50 characters into this space, which is more than enough uh, for the average name plus a, a little bit more. So go for it and make sure that people know who you are and what you do. You can see here also I've used hashtags on here so that people can search for me. So you can actually search Twitter um, for a name and for um, a anything else really. So. If, you, if there's a hashtag that's used a lot related to you, then it will be worth putting it next to your display name so that people find you more easily if that's what they're looking for. The next one down here is your bio. Um, again, this is a real exercise in um, being brief but effective. You have um, 160 characters to use in your bio. So we always recommend to use the whole lot because um, then you can make the most of it. Um, and you can see that again, I've um, put speakers agent down here with a hashtag. So use your hashtags, make sure that, um, you know, anything that's worth, uh, that's, that's um, relevant to you and worth searching for has a hashtag on it, that's no problem at all. You'll see here also that I've mentioned Speaker World, which is the Speakers Associates um, brand, um, that they have a an account in themselves, and I work for Speakers Associates as a speakers agent. So that's why I've put that on there. So if you have a company, a separate business name, then and you have an account for it, then by all means mention that as well, so that you've got some linkages within the um, platform. And um, be a person as well. Um, by that I mean put something personal on that makes you easier to relate to as well. So I've just put nature lover, owner of two cute dogs. So that's something about me personally. I'm not just sitting there at a desk. That's not my only life. Um, I have other interests as well. So do that too. You might get some people interested in you because of that. Um, and if you speak about 
if you give stories related to those that bring the lesson out in your speeches, then it's worth putting something in there. Next one down is location. Um, I've just put Nottingham, that's where I am. However, you will notice that location is actually free text. You can put what you like. It's not a drop down of places. So if you are an internationally based speaker, as in you will go anywhere to do your speaking, which a lot of our speakers certainly do, then there's not much point in putting your location because you will be available in any any place. So if your bio is not long enough for you, use the location as well, just to put a few keywords in there and maybe one or two other points that you might want to include. Next one is website, that's fairly straightforward. Um, you might also want to use um, the um, bio to put a website in there as well. If you have more than one website, for example, you might want to put your speaker um, website there, all about you, but if you have a business website as well, you could do a, a um, shorten the URL and put it into your bio as well. So don't forget that. Um, remember, you can do more than one in a clever way, or maybe in the location section, perhaps. You can add a date of birth. It's not entirely <laughs> necessary to do that, I, in my opinion. A quick word on the banner up here. This is what a lot of the time you will start with if you're set, setting off afresh with a Twitter account. Um, with your pictures, do make sure that you add a picture for a start. Uh, people want to know what you look like. There's no offence in doing that. And if you are a speaker or a consultant or a coach, your face is going to be in front of lots of people anyway. So get your photos done professionally. Get a good head and shoulders shot of yourself and put it on your social media accounts. And if possible, in terms of branding for yourself, make sure it's the same one. So uh, do it across all your accounts so that people know that it's the same person that they found, uh, regardless of whether you've been able to um, give yourself the same name on each account or not, depending on the availability. Um, and of course, the, the header here, this banner picture, can be quite difficult to do. Uh, even, you know, if you see, I've got a picture of me in Dubai there, but I'm kind of just on, on the wrong side, really, aren't I? Because I've got my picture here. So it's not a great example. We'll, we'll look at some others in a minute. Um, but you can actually produce those yourself um, so that they're the right size and they sit correctly on there um, using a free tool like Canva.com. Um, and you can um, learn how to do that really easily. They've got some great training videos. I put some um, the link on this video here, and then you can go there and have a look and see if you can use that. So you don't need to worry about employing anybody to create that for you. There are plenty of resources um, besides that as well that you could use. Finally, let's just have a very quick look. Um, at the home page here um, because you can actually once you've got into it um, you can pin tweets to the top of your feed so if you find that you've tweeted something that has loads of people liking it or sharing it then it's well worth putting that to the top just to stay there for a little bit on your timeline and the way to do that is to go to your profile so that you get the tweets that you've done and then um, on the one that you want, click on this arrow here in the corner and it just says pin to your profile. So that uh, you get instructions, this will appear at the top of your profile and then you can click pin and that stays there. And it's actually labeled as a pinned tweet. So if you get lots of um, engagement with the tweet, or there is something in particular that you're particularly passionate about and you do want people to see it, then pin it to the top and that will get seen. Um, it's well worth doing that. Let's have a very quick run through some other people who have done their Twitter profiles. Um, this is Arianna Huffington of Huffington Post. 
and she has um, Ariana Huff. That's not a bad one for her. Lots of people have heard of her. It's an unusual name, certainly um, in the UK and maybe Europe. Um, so people will know it's her. Um, she has done a mention for the Huffington Post there. Um, and Thrive, which is um, uh, something that she's very passionate about. She's put their website in her bio by the, there. And she hasn't even included her location um, information. So you can leave it blank and it won't show up at all. Um, so that's quite a nice one. She's got a good banner picture there as well. So she's got, she's very um, passionate about Thrive Global at the moment. Simon Sinek, who a lot of people ask for, he is so well known now that he can um, play a little bit, um, which is why he's um, able to put this on his profile. Um, he has mentioned his new book, The Infinite Game, which comes out October 15th. So as of yet, um, this is October the... Uh, 28th that I'm recording this so he needs to update that <laughs> so he's a very busy man though um, but I'm sure that will be updated very soon um, to, to mention the fact that it is available now um, uh, so that's another thing if you've got a new book or something like that coming out then do by all means mention it but be aware that you need to update it Rahaf Harfush she's a great speaker um, you can see she's a digital anthropologist. Um, she did the social media when Barack Obama came into uh, his post as president. So she knows all about social media. So she's a good one to look at. Um, again, Rahaf is looking at her new book, which is uh, has been out February 19th. Um, and she's got lots of hashtags and a mention. So she's really gone for it and uh, done a lot there. Um, you can see she still wants to promote her book, Hustle and Float, but I'm pretty sure if we look at that in a couple of months, that will be changed as well. She's quite active on here. Lady Karen Brady of The Apprentice. A lot of people will know her from that. Um, she, uh, interestingly, hasn't used any hashtags or any mentions down here. Um, but of course, she has 276.2 thousand followers. So I don't think we need to worry too much about her um, looking for followers. Everybody just comes to her anyway. Uh, so she's just got a straightforward description of who she is and what she's known for. And you can see she's um, got a montage together for her banner. That's something that you could possibly consider if you've done some interesting stuff that people recognise. Um, that would be really interesting. The last one is Brian Tracy, motivational speaker. And again, he's got some good hashtags here. There's speaker, author and success, massive hashtags, in fact. Um, in a way, when we talk about hashtags um, in, our, in another video, it will be interesting to... <laughs> I think we might find that something like speaker, author or success are really huge popular hashtags that I'm not sure how much good they are actually doing him but as the guru of those three then he can't really avoid having those in his bio. He's also got hashtag Brian Tracy which is an interesting one I guess a lot of people do just hashtag him as well rather than mention him too and he's got a 12 14 step goal setting guide there that he has um, put a link to in his bio so if you've got something like that that people can download then um, that's a great one to put in there 